Andrew Hewitt. Great honor. Thank you, Mr. Bernard, for that welcome. Ni hao, oi, hola, bonjour, privet, and hello. Greetings to Headmaster Menard, Associate Heads, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, and especially the graduating class of 2015. Thank you for granting me the opportunity to address you. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. On this day, at this time, in 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia boldly proposed to the Continental Congress a resolution calling for a Declaration of Independence. The Declaration stated that if there is something wrong and injustice in society, those who have the ability to take action have the responsibility. Class of 2015, I don't need to tell you there is something wrong in the world. Overcoming global warming, social injustice, and scores of other challenges are grave necessities. We do not only have the ability to meet these challenges, we have the responsibility. This world demands our qualities of youth, not a time of life, but a state of mind, a temper of will, a quality of imagination, a predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the love of ease. Monumental changes do not come from our leaders and those at the pinnacle of society. Revolutions just don't come from that direction. They start with people like you and I who are unsatisfied with the world and the way it's given to them. Most of us accept the world the way it is. We don't want to cause too much trouble. We're afraid to hurt anyone and tiptoe through life. But life can be a lot more than that. It is from countless diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is shaped. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the life of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Let us follow in the tradition of that most daring generation. My second point is that graduation is often a time where you come clean and tell your classmate things that you may have held back for months or even years. As I stand before you all today, I can't help but feel this is the ideal opportunity to tell you something I've held back for a very, very long time. I hope you fail. Now to be clear, I hope you fail a lot. No, I am not being condescending or resentful. I hope you fail because it means you're pushing the limits, redefining your comfort zone, and if you study successful people throughout history, pushing past failure is one of the few common characteristics. Abraham Lincoln was defeated in eight elections. Babe Ruth held not only the home run record, but also the strikeout record. Van Gogh sold one painting to a close family friend during his entire life. History is littered with such instances. It is the norm rather than an outlier. The fact is, if you don't fail, you've lived your life so cautiously, you may as well have not lived at all. Many of you have an idea of what you want to do with your life. Doctors, lawyers, and that's great. But don't fear failure. It is often our failure to become our perceived, ide our perceived ideal that results in our own unique identity. To end, I'm reminded of a speech I gave our class four seemingly short years ago. We were a group of overly ambitious freshmen with only a dream of where we would be today. When we had our dreams, we were told no by a chorus of cynics. We were asked to pause for reality check. We were warned against wielding false hope. But. In the unlikely story that has been this class, there has never been anything false about hope. For when we face down impossible odds, when we've been told that we're not ready, 
or that we shouldn't try, or that we can't, hundreds of students have responded with a simple creed that sums up the spirit of a class. Yes, we will. After four years of hard work and persistence, I'm here to tell you, class of 2015, yes, we did. It was sung by students who struck out from distant shores in hopes of a greater education, and will now go on to institutions like Emory, MIT, and Georgia Tech. Yes, we did. It is a creed ingrained in the very DNA of our sports team, as we won more collective state and regional championships than any other class since 1898. Yes, we did. It was whispered by our actors as they reached new heights in their world-class productions. Yes, we did. When you leave here today, you are not only a graduate of Thornton Academy, you are a graduate of the class of 2015, the greatest class to ever graduate from this institution. <laughs> yes, we did do all these things, and yes, we will continue to in the future. And so this morning, as we continue the long journey ahead of us, as we continue to set precedents, shatter records, and defy odds, we will remember that there is something happening in this class, that we were never as divided as our clique suggests, that we are one class, one school, and together we will begin the next great chapter of our story with three words that have rung through every classroom and echoed through every hall, yes, we did. God bless, and thank you for the honor of addressing you.